Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, August 16. Minister of Science, Energy and Technology Dr. Andrew Wheatley says investigations have begun on the possible causes of a fire which broke out at the Petrodam oil refinery sometime after 4 this morning. The minister visited the refinery to get a first-hand view of the situation. The fire has since been contained by the fire brigade and Petrojam. Meanwhile, the energy minister is assuring the nation that there is no gas shortage. His comments come amid rumors of an impending gas shortage due to the fire at Petrojam. The minister says the sector is functioning as normal and there is no need for panic. The backlog caused by a disruption in service at the Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited KFTL, is expected to be cleared by this week. Between August 8 and 10, the Port Trailer Haulage Association carried out industrial actions citing long delays when retrieving containers from the wharf. However, through government intervention, normal operations resumed on Thursday. To accommodate the clearing of the backlog caused by the withdrawal of service, domestic operations were extended from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Friday and from 1.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Sunday. At a press conference Tuesday, Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Dr. Harris Chang, blamed the disruption on a breakdown in communication. He urged the parties involved to work together as the country transitions into a major logistics center. Dr. Chang argued that to overcome the expected teething problems during the transition period, additional training, organizational management and communication would be required. The port functions smoothly when shippers are coming in with ships on time. They are being unloaded efficiently in a timely manner and they're getting on the trucks in an efficient and timely manner and from the trucks to the consignees in the system. And all the parts involve customs, <coughs> port handlers, truckers, port authority, shipping associates uh, must work in conjunction to ensure that there is a smooth flow. During the press briefing, Dr. Chang updated the gathering on the measures implemented to ensure efficiency at the port. The Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited has agreed to make six straddle carriers available at the domestic section of the wharf during normal work hours and eight during peak hours. The KFTL will also ensure there is proper planning and control of the appointment system for containers, as well as convene more frequent meetings with the port trailer haulers. Dr. Chang also assured that once the Navis Terminal Operating System and the Asikuda World were fully implemented, the turnaround time for operations on the port will be 25 minutes or below. Minister of Health Dr. Christopher Tufton says he will be making further decisions once in receipt of a final report into the circumstances which led to construction work being done on a pediatric ward while occupied. Dr. Tufton had ordered an immediate probe into the incident, which happened at the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital in Westmoreland. The health minister says a preliminary report revealed that there was a breakdown in protocol. It is just not appropriate to have patients around, in this case kids who are in recovery mode with workmen um, doing work in the facility. And I think when we make errors, we must admit that those errors have been made and we must do what is necessary to take corrective action. We did that in, turn, in the early stages by stopping the work and taking the action that was required. Um, however, we have to ensure also that it doesn't reoccur in the future. So the report that I have requested will outline systems and procedures that are to be put in place to avoid this from recurring. Dr. Tufton was speaking with JIS News following Friday's tour of the hospital where he said operations had been normalized. Jamaicans exiting the Program of Advancement through Health and Education, PATH, are being reassured that they will not be immediately cut from the program. Cabinet recently approved the PATH graduation strategy, whereby benefits to some beneficiaries will discontinue and those persons given employment opportunities, allowing other needy persons to access the program. At a recent sensitization session in St. Anne, Portfolio Minister Shahini Robinson said the strategy would allow for a reapplication exercise which would verify who are the most needy in society. The reapplication exercise will be done every four years and each beneficiary's situation will be assessed so as to allow those exiting the program access to the funds over a six-month transition period. I'm sure that you will agree that every time that you walk, you see somebody somebody else who wants to get their children on the PATH program or they have an elderly adult or a disabled person that they want to get on the program. 
and if it were that we just kept these 365 recipients on it, then that we wouldn't be creating any room for more persons to come on board. And finally, the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, is warning business operators to comply with the island's planning and environmental laws to avoid facing legal action. The agency says it is taking a zero-tolerance approach towards breaches and has stepped up its compliance efforts by taking legal action against businesses which are operating without the required environmental permits and beach licenses. NEPA's warning follows the conviction of Dancorp Limited, operators of the Waterland Attraction in St. Mary, for breaching the Natural Resources Conservation Authority Act. Dancorp Limited was fined $20,000 after pleading guilty Thursday to operating an ecotourism facility without an environmental permit. The conclusion of the court hearing came almost two years after the charges were brought against Dancorp by NEPA for breaches under Section 9 of the NRCA. Persons who are found guilty of Section 9 of the NRCA Act may be fined up to $50,000, sentenced up to two years in prison, or suffer both penalties. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.